So, number one thing to get on that I'm fucking bummed about and really pissed off about. I'm not sure some of you guys care, but it looks like Deedons and Mira is done for good. The Bodega Boys, the Hive, the brand is not strong anymore and they decided to call it quits. It feels like this is like, um, been happening way more often lately. It feels like in the last few years or something, quite a lot of podcasts have either broken up, uh, rebranded, had a new lineup or just completely been defunct. You know what I mean, I'm not, and I'm not too sure if this is maybe a reflection on the podcast scene overall. Maybe the money isn't there as much as it was before. Maybe it's getting really boring now. People don't want to sit around with their friends talking shit. Um, I don't know, whatever the thing is, but it feels like a lot of these guys and girls are basically not being able to kind of see this through. And it feels like a lot of them are kind of hitting bumpy roads and stuff, which is why I'm happy. I always done this podcast on my own, or my, my main one, the Axe in the Dinger Show, because I don't really give a shit about interviewing people and asking them questions because I generally do not give a fuck. And also, when you ask people questions, or, oh, you want to interview them, they always get a bit big timey. So I always never wanted to get into that conversation because I hate rejection as well. So I hate rejection and I hate asking people questions. So I didn't want to get involved in that stuff. But some of the things, the, 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 as, a, as a fan, the fucking connection that you would feel with these guys and girls that you don't know, parasocial relationships that you'd kind of build with them, or the fact that you'd identify different parts of your personality in different types of people and stuff, or you'd enjoy just their kind of, you know, their vibe and how they got along and didn't get along on the show, it made it what it was. I mean, it made it what it was. So when this stuff kind of breaks up, it really breaks your heart because this was, this was like your, every, especially for me, this is not everything, but this was like part of my kind of um, day-to-day do you know what I mean? This is what you listen to all the time. This is where you got your news, you got your updates and stuff, your whatever it may be. So when these guys break up, you're like, oh man, this is so annoying. Oh shit, another super chat. Big up, Mark Brennan YouTube channel. Don't melt, bro. Stop using that um, Celsius crap. Oh, here, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big up, big up. Big up, Mark Brennan YouTube channel. Big up for the $2 super chat. I appreciate you, gang. But yeah, anyway, um, the news here, courtesy of Showtime. Um, these are some mirrors, sorry, Showtime. Um, Twitter um, accounts as follows. Bodega Hive, the illustrious Deezus and, and Miro will be pursuing separate creative endeavors moving forward. Deezus and Miro will not be returning to Showtime. It's been a good, it's been a good run, fam. And in case you're wondering, a couple of days before this, there were some weird back and forths between Deezus and some fans. And then somebody posted a screenshot of an account that belonged to Miro, his other co-host on the Bodega Boy subreddit, where he basically insinuated that the show wasn't going to be moving forward. We have no idea why this is happening. Um, some people are speculating that it could be because um, Jesus, one of the guys on the show, has become a little bit more Hollywood now. He's been hanging around with more people in the industry. He's doing more stuff on his own in that regards. He supposedly has been dating some famous people, famous women, sorry, here and there. And Miro has been the one that's been kind of, you know, just kind of been happy to do the show in a podcast. And maybe that was part of the friction. But as per usual, we know Wild Guan, innit? We know the deal. When 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 these podcasts break up, the main reason why they break up, the numero uno reason, is always money. It's always money, unfortunately. It's really, really sad, and I would wish it wouldn't be. But for whatever reason, money always breaks these guys up. Money always breaks... And, it's, and for me, I've never really understood why, because I think one of my... Um, even though I don't do this podcast with people, and it's always on my own, one of the things I always credit myself for being really good at when I used to promote parties and I used to, you know, when I was DJing really, really heavily, like every single weekend, I'd put on these raves and these parties at different places, pubs, bars, in different spaces, whatever it may be. And I'd always go out of my way to book my friends who DJs who played. Sometimes they weren't even that good just because you want to get your friends on board. And I'd always make an effort to always kind of hire my friends to design the flyers. And sometimes it wasn't even anything that detailed. It was just putting a, a, an, an image on top of a picture or whatever it may be. But I didn't have to do it myself at that time. So I thought, hey, let's kind of pay somebody, me and the other guy I was doing it with. And I'd always go out my way to pay my friends. I'd never ask my friends to do something for me at that event, whether it was fucking being at the door and signing off names or the guest list or handing tokens out. There was nothing that I did creatively in that kind of space that I would ever ask anyone to do for free. It would always be, would always be kind of giving money. And I always felt like that, in a weird way, solidified some of my friendships with my friends or maybe elevated our friendship to the next level because it showed that I was respecting them on this level above friendship because you know when you got a friend that's you know a chef or a friend that's a flipping carpenter or something or a friend that's a plumber they maybe can sometimes think oh you're taking advantage of them because they're your friend and they can do that job whereas when you pay them it's sort of like you respecting the fact that your friends 
but also respecting the fact that they're a professional at what they do outside of your friendship. Do you know what I mean? Like people pay them for their time, whether they're employed, whether they're in an agency, whether they've got their own company, whatever it may be, whether they just do it in their bedroom, people actually, you know, you can't do that thing so you should pay them for their time. And I always just, and I always just think that's kind of like something that you can kind of strive for with your friends. So I would always think in my head, if I had the flipping luxury to build a multi-million dollar podcast on my own, Oh, sorry, podcast with some friends, sorry. And maybe even go further as, as building a flipping network. I would actually love to see all my friends eating. It will be amazing to pull up to... A, my dream would be to pull up to a fucking driveway or pull up to a parking lot of a podcast studio and everyone's got some sick whip. Everyone's got like a Ferrari, a Lamb Again, I don't care about cars. I'm not a car guy. But just imagine, in terms of like pitching something, it's, it's much better to see like 16 Porsches than to be like, you know, these Brendan Schaub guys who's pulling up to his drive to his parking lot in a fucking Ferrari and fucking Chin's driving a Prius. And if we're being honest, really, if we're being honest, really, Chin's the most important person in that building. If Chin leaves, if, or if, if God forbid Chin passes away or something, right, the fire and the kid or thick boy fucking falls. You know what I mean? That whole building goes crumbling. But yet the wealth isn't necessarily spread around evenly. And again, maybe it's because Chin doesn't want a Ferrari and he's his own guy, cool, whatever it may be. But I've never understood why money could be an issue with people. I've never understood, especially when you build it from the ground up, like you guys were doing this together. Why is now money an issue now? Before it was never an issue and you had no money. Like, you know, you're fucking um, breaking up sandwiches and giving them to each other in the shops and shit, right? Or lending each other money and stuff or letting people sleep on your couch and then suddenly you get money and it becomes more of an issue. I, I've never understood that. Especially with these big, me especially when it comes to metal bands. Metal bands have figured it out. I think it's Iron Maiden or maybe it's Metallica. Maybe it's Metallica. I think Metallica once said in some interview that when they go on tour, they all stay in different hotel rooms or they'll stay in different locations completely and only see each other at rehearsals. So that kind of, you know, makes it so they don't get, you know, they're not, they're not always at each other's throats because obviously they're, you know, they're, they're grown men. Do you know what I mean? They're plus 50 years old. They're not going to be sleeping in a fucking tour bus all day long, right? But there's also clearly an understanding behind the scenes of who's kind of the importance of everyone in their band and they split the money accordingly and then they also treat it like a bit of like a job. Do you know what I mean? That kind of idea. So the money doesn't get a little bit dumb. Yeah, yeah, we've done that, is it? We've done that right too. I don't know. For some reason, I don't, these podcasters like, the breakups and stuff just seems a bit weird. Just seems a bit weird. Just seems a bit strange for me personally. Seems a bit strange. Like, why can't you handle a bit of money coming in? Do you know what I mean? And don't get me wrong. Unless you're Joe Rogan, the money is great. Don't get me wrong. Like for instance, like you know, I'm sure there's some people out there when you're working a job where you're earning two grand a month, and then suddenly you're talking shit into a camera and you're making ten grand a month. That's a lot of money, but it's still not money enough to like really start changing on people. Do you know what I mean? If you're if you're really going Hollywood on people because you're getting 10 grand a month that means that you're a real piece of shit really if you think about it because that's not really that life-changing amount a bit of money it does, it's just a lot but it's not like gold house money so the fact that people are changing and really flipping up on their friends and you know can't work together anymore because of whatever it may be it just I don't know I just it's just unfortunate it really is I hope it's not anything too deep and maybe they just broke up because you know things just end the way they end but I'm a little bit bummed. I'm not going to lie, man. I really enjoyed that podcast. I really fucking enjoyed it, man. I really enjoyed the podcast. I enjoyed the show on Viceland. <sighs> Are you silly, bro? The show on Viceland? Dean Samira on Viceland was on another level. How good that show was. I never missed a clip. Then once you went to Showtime, it kind of deaded it out. Maybe some people would say even when it went to Viceland in the first place, it was kind of a bit watered down. But man, anyway, what can you do?